again, thank you so much for tuning into my channel. I'd like to thank, first of all, anybody that subscribed recently to the channel. I'd like to thank subscribers in general. Very much appreciated. Hope you're enjoying the short films I'm making. And in this film, which is part four of our journey from Yelvertoft to London, we will be starting on the outskirts of Milton Keynes. We hadn't been going long that day, just stopped to get supplies at the local supermarket, which was only five minutes walk away from the canal. And then we shall be heading off down the Grand Union towards London and I hope you enjoy the trip. Look out for the herons. I think there's something a little bit strange with them. Something you don't normally see, or I certainly don't normally see. And um, enjoy the film in general. Thank you very much. Enjoy. <coughs> So as we leave the moorings near Bridge 71 in Milton Keynes, it's another lovely sunny day. Now here is a very interesting mural, the train mural, beside the Grand Union Canal at Wolverton. It was originally painted in 1986 by a gentleman called Bill Billings who was the artist in residence of Milton Keynes Development Corporation under an urban aid scheme run by the local Milton Keynes branch of the Inland Waterways Association. Members have looked after this mural since it was painted and a major refurbishment was carried out in 2011. Over the years the vegetation had grown over the mural and it was in need of clearing and extensive repainting work despite constant touching up of the paint by branch volunteers. The wooden cruiser on the left here looks like it belongs more on the Norfolk Broads or the River Thames, but boats up to 12 foot 6 inches in width can navigate this section of the Grand Union Canal. Here we're going to go across the Grafton Street Aqueduct which was completed in 1991 in the area of New Bradwell. It crosses a dual carriageway, which is quite interesting when you're looking down on the cars below. This will not be the last time on our journey to central London that we will pass over a main road on another aqueduct.
on this next bridge as the canal bears round to the left you can see how the tow ropes from the horses have worn away the iron protection that was fastened to the corners of the bridges. Milton Keynes just south of bridge 75. Coming up here on the right um, is an old parking meter. This is the old parking meter. And yet another skeleton. This is the second one I've seen in the uh, in the last day on the boat. Getting to get a little bit nervous myself. This is another place I'd wish we'd stopped. Such an inviting pub. The trees on the left here certainly do need a bit of pruning. They reduce the width of the canal by quite uh, quite an amount. The water tap here is easily missed on the non towpath side of the canal. The Newport Pagnell Canal, which is one and a quarter miles long with seven locks joined the Grand Union in 1817 but unfortunately was bought out and closed by the Newport Pagnell Railway Company in 1867. Now this is an absolutely beautiful private marina, homes, gardens, boats, what more could you ask for? The Y-beam boat here, Moose Drool, has recently been for sale with the brokerage Rugby Boat Sales. Camp Bell Park, Milton Keynes. The park is named in honour of the first chairman of Milton Keynes Development Corporation. Jock Campbell, Baron Campbell of Eskram. The park is a mixture of formal gardens, water features, woodland and open pasture. We're now approaching Campbell Wharf which according to the website is a new mixed use development by Crest Nicholson in central Milton Keynes. It consists of a marina, Camp Bell Wharf Marina, with 111 berths, a canal side pub, cafe, restaurant, and a landmark new footbridge linking the two sides of the canal. And I forgot to mention the 383 new homes that uh, were being built there. Looks all very interesting. 
I dare say it's come on a lot since then, but I've not been back to the area. This is Campbell Wharf Marina. It was only opened in April 2019, so it only just opened when we were passing. I don't know what was up with the herons that particular day but um, usually when you're travelling along the herons will stay still and then fly off just about when you've got to them and then land and then if you've gone to a place where they flew off to they then fly off again but um, or stay still and go back to where they come from but uh, that particular day the herons weren't flying anywhere. We decided to pull into Milton Keynes Marina as the holding tank on our pump out toilet was beginning to smell terribly and it's underneath the double bed. So we pulled into the Milton Keynes Marina, got a pump out picked up several bags of duck food and set off again. Now this is an interesting boat we're just passing. It's uh, a ship's lifeboat. About the first we've seen on this journey to London but it certainly won't be the last. And another heron that's uh, not flying today. And another one. And another one of those lovely canal side pubs that one wished one had stopped at. But I went past. Well that was a surprise. The first flying heron of the day. And a horse's head stuck on the side of a house. So we've moored up. We're just before Fenny Stratford Lock only has a rise of one foot one inch but some nice moorings here it was about five o'clock ish i believe and we stopped the night Some folks sat at the lock waiting for another boat to come along, opened the gates and swung the bridge which is over the centre of the lock for us which was exceptionally helpful. That's just an office that's uh, by the side of the lock, old photograph of the lock in black and white and distance to nearby points. I wonder if this heron is related to the others we saw the previous day. It's easy to forget when you're travelling by narrowboat that the Grand Union can accommodate wide beam boats and that was a lovely example 
And here's another one. That was a very interesting marina with all those boats on the side out of the water in various states of repair. And we passed another heron that decided not to fly. Absolutely stunning scenery here as we continue south down the Grand Union Canal. This Dutch barge is absolutely beautiful. It will go on both the Grand Union Canal and you can take it out to sea to do some coastal cruising. Lovely boat. Stoke Hammond Lock, Grand Union Canal. We were lucky at these three locks. There was another boat to share the locks with, another narrow boat. There were volunteer lock keepers on duty. And we were up the three locks in no time. I wish we'd stopped at the pub possibly and had more before the locks or after the locks. But anyway, we, we carried on going. This really had been another beautiful day's travelling. Sometimes one can imagine you're on a beautiful river, not the Grand Union Canal. Lovely scenery. Anyway, we're going to moor up early for the day. It's only about half past three-ish. And um, after getting underneath this bridge with uh, some loose bricks on it, which thankfully didn't fall on us, um, we're going to stop at a beautiful mooring by a pub called The Globe.
We're going to stop overnight. We had a lovely meal there in the evening. And uh, other than the sewage works opposite, which thankfully we didn't smell too much, uh, the location is, is absolutely fantastic. So I'm going to be saying cheerio. Hope to see you in the next part of the series of films on our journey down to London. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for subscribing. Please like. Please feel free to comment. Cheerio and thank you.